What's up, Capo and Nation? Welcome back to the Capo Experience Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in and thank you so much for coming back. And now listen to the second part of this conversation. This was amazing, amazing conversation with Instructor Faisca and Professor Avatros. So the only thing I'm ask, uh, I'm going to ask you on, on return. The only thing, only one thing is just subscribe, actually two or multiple things, but please subscribe to the channel. The YouTube channel is going to be very, very helpful and very, very nice. It's going to make me, it's going to make me love you yeah. even more because you do capoeira. I really love you because of that. So help me out. Help me grow this amazing, amazing Capoeira library. It's a free, free library for everybody in the in the world because you can get access to this online so you can listen to this anywhere in the world. So please, please just give me a follow. Give me a really nice review. That's going to help me to pump the podcast a little bit higher, a higher ranking and just give me five stars on Spotify or where are you listening to this okay apple podcast that's very very useful okay so please thank you so much listen to the second part and i'll see you later peace i'm gonna try to like give a simple like some simple tips i don't know yeah. that it's gonna completely explain how to project your voice but i'll tell you like some common errors that people do commonly people will think that you project and sing with your throat Oh yeah. You do oh, yeah. not. Yeah. These muscles here should not tense up when you sing. If you sing and you have a sore throat after you sing, you're unfortunately using wrong technique. And that's okay. Like it happens with a lot yeah, of people. For sure. Don't get discouraged. Don't stop singing because of that. Yeah. But um just be careful to not overdo your vocal cords because you can damage them and you really yeah. want to be able to care for them. But the projection actually happens in the mask of your of your face. So instead of the the sound coming more out of like your chest, it moves into the mask. And so it's it's really difficult to go into like a lot of detail on how you For project. Sure. Yeah. But um having like good posture, like if you see people who sing opera, huh. They, that that they are master projectors yeah, they for sing sure. out a microphone yeah. and they fill a whole stadium of of their sound right so <laughs> they if, if you sing and your back is kind of like this and your neck is tilted down this is bad like your yeah. pipe right here is going to determine how much air is compressed outwards to sustain quality of your voice yeah. So that windpipe needs to be at a neutral level. So yeah. keeping your neck neutral and keeping your chest proud is going to help you project your voice better. Um, and then like maybe singing classes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. What am I going to say after that? I, I I don't have anything to add after this very technical answer. No, that's nice. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, you know, um, it's it's funny because um, I uh, there's something else that I, I I always tell my students, which is, OK, um, have you been singing the same way when you are leading and when you are in the coro? Mm. Think about it. Good point. Because Good point, yeah. so many times, so many times we use our voice from the coro the same way that we use our voice when we are leading with a song. And it's totally different. Yeah. Like when you are in the coda, there's like 20 people along with you. So you, you, you don't have to project your voice the same way. Right. Yeah. When you're leading, it's, it's a, it's an, another voice that you're going to be using. It's another you that you're going to be using. And um, uh, I guess that listening to yourself will help you. So uh, it, it goes back to the, the other question, but also when you're able to listen to yourself, the more you're able to listen to yourself, the better you're going to be at projecting. And uh, obviously, along with the vocal exercises, warming it up and stuff like that. But one thing that I always do, and, and this I do like while driving, I get songs and I, I try to vary the way that I sing them, oh. you know, in order to be more comfortable with the song. And uh, I, I never, never, ever try to sing 
the same way that the composer did. Yeah. So, for example, we listened to Master Pernalonga's album singing Par de Asas, which is an amazing song. I will not be able to sing it the same way that he does mm -hmm. because it's him. And yeah, I, I'm yeah. A, I'm a, I've got another voice. I got other, you know, things. So try not to reproduce the same way that the, the album does, like exactly like copy and paste. No, adapt it to your voice, you know? And then again, don't speed it up. Try to prolong, try to articulate. Uh, I, I always do this with Beira Mar. Like, I, I sometimes I sing it faster, like, Beira Mar, yo, yo, Beira Mar, ya, ya. And sometimes I go like, Beira Mar, yo, yo. Beira Mar, ya, ya. Nice. Nice. So you see, it's an exercise. Yeah. It's 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 even for for you to like okay, I'm I'm able to sing it this way or no, I should be practicing more. It's like a sort of a self evaluation. Yeah. You know, yeah. you run a self evaluation. Okay, I'm I'm able to sing this song this way. I'm not able to sing this song this way, and then you create your own track list. You know. <laughs> so I think what Albatros just said is super important, um, and I'm glad that you bring it up. The importance of like just grabbing songs and playing with them. I hear this from a lot of singers um, that they just will be driving, playing around with their voice and discovering their voice. Huh. In the same way in capoeira, you say faz movimentação, you move around, move your body, and you discover, wow, I can do this cavajajin this way and I can go that way. Your vocal cords are the same thing. You need to play around. And the more often you do it, the more quality and like knowledge you will extract of your own vocal capability. So if you weight lift once a month or once a week, it's not gonna, you're not gonna really get cut. You're not gonna get yeah. stronger. Yeah. It's gonna feel really difficult every time. But if you're weightlifting three times a week, you know, and you're taking care of your diet, you're gonna get super cut. Like, yeah, and you're gonna for be sure. super encouraged. And so I, I've stayed the most encouraged with my singing when I'm disciplined and stuck to, okay, I'm going to practice three times a week. Even if that, even if that practicing, it doesn't have to be an hour. It can be 10 minutes. Yeah, exactly. You know, I'm going to do just some warm ups, and I'm going to listen to some songs and play around with these songs. Like, I just think that's really great advice. For sure. I like that. Yeah. Cause at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's another muscle. It's another muscle that you, you can practice and then you can get it either and it goes like both ways, right? You can either get stronger or it gets weaker. It, it's just how it is, just human body. <laughs> and then, so that also comes, that projection comes with, with breathing too, right? Because, I mean, if the way the way you breathe in the heart or as you're singing is, is very important too, because I also run with the issue, like there's songs that I, I run out of the breath and then... <gasps> I got to catch and then keep going and then you get more tired singing than playing the other because <laughs> you, you don't breathe correctly. So some breathing exercise there that, that you guys think that people can do to either project the voice, to sing longer, to to not get tired as you sing. What, what do you guys think about that? Well, um, I'll, I'll go for the more practical thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm sure that's... that Faiska... Faiska... Faiska will go very technical. So uh, that, that's the perfect combination that you did today, man. Like uh, <laughs> I, I go practical, like organic uh, way. They go and nice. then Faiska comes with the, the theory and then it all nice, combines. Nice, nice. I like it. Um, what, I, what I think is like sometimes people, uh, they forget uh, how to breathe. Forget how to breathe. Is that possible to say this? They, they they don't think about breathing well. Yeah, yeah, they're because, not because because they're they're not they're not pauses while 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 they're playing. So it's not only singing. One thing is singing without playing. All right, so there's one breathing. Another thing is like singing while playing and when to have a pause and when to breathe. So example, uh, I, I always I'll go back to Bangel. Bangela, you're playing. Dun ding, dun ding, dun ding, dun ding, dun ding, dun ding. When I when I'm singing, what I try to do is like, uh, I'll do the repique, the dobrada. I don't know how you call it. Like dun ding, dun ding, dun ding, dun. 
this is the time that I'm reading. And then I get, you know, the energy in my lungs that will help me to go back when I go to the dun, dun. So the pauses that I have while I'm playing will be connected to the pauses that I have while I'm singing. This is very difficult to apply to all songs, but you're going to be able to do this for some of them. And then you learn how to connect this, you know, while you're playing and when you breathe and when you have a pause and when you interact with people. Yeah. So nice. this is something that I do. Again, I don't know. There's there's no way for me to do this for all all songs. Yeah. But sure. for example, when I compose my song, I did this like Capoeira viaja no mundo, não importa qual for sua passagem, dan din dan din dan din dan din. So I did this dobrada because I wanted to sing well, so I need to breathe. This pause will help me. Quero ver a cantiga dizer dan din dan din dan din dan din. Boa viagem. You see? Yeah. So yeah. this connection from the belly bow to the pauses, I breathe and then I go stronger. This helps me. But again, I, I don't, there's no formula, there's no script for me. There are prep exercises that you can do in order to breathe better, in order to warm it up. But I guess that the connection when you're when you're playing and when you're singing, this will help. The more aware you are about the pauses the better for you. Nice. Avatraz, you said something really important in the beginning is, and I completely agree with it, which is people have forgotten how to breathe. Yeah. And um, this is like a very accurate statement because if you have like an anxious short breath and you're always kind of like, <laughs> and then you're going to yeah. go sing and you're, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> plus you're nervous, you're like, you like don't expand your full rib cage. Like yeah. people are not used to expanding their rib cage. Yeah. And this is actually something that um, I learned with my friend Morena, Professora Morena. I don't know how many of y'all know yeah. her. She's amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, so if you put your hands around your ribs and actually take some time without singing, without training or anything, take some time to do a full breath, like breathe in. Breathe out. Nice. And do this multiple times without elevating your chest. Breathe through your rib cage using your diaphragm and understand like that full control. Because like Albatro said, when you have that pause in the and you want to actually use and like regulate your body and your anxiety, <laughs> you want to use that full breath. And then sometimes whenever you're singing, there's different types of breathing that you can use. For example, if you're singing and there's like a very short uh, space for you to breathe, we uh, there's this thing called a uh, respiração de susto, which is just, you just like, you have, <laughs> but you oh, practice nice. it. Okay. So um, yeah. you, you have to just pull in like a really short breath. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think how I would practice this in singing class, but um. So yeah, so what we would do is we would um, sing like Mickey, maybe like um, vowels. Um, ah, e, e, oh, ah, there, nice. Oh, ooh, ah, nice. so like not like sticking to the time. Yeah. And and getting your breath in as quickly as you can without without losing the beat. Now, of course, I'm being super technical. I know, I know, Yo, I know. Go ahead. No, but it's you okay. guys, like, thank you for that. <laughs> good. Yeah. It helps. It helps yeah. whenever. And all of a sudden, you're gonna be able to compose some songs that are a little bit more com balance on swingy mais yeah. apertadinho because you you have the breath for it, you know. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. actually practicing that respiração de susto, which translates to like. A scare breath. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're somebody scares some technical yeah. word for it. Okay. <laughs> but so that I have found that to be super helpful. Okay. And and you can kind of play around. Okay. Right now I can use my full breath. Right now I can use scare breath. Another thing is um one thing I've discovered recently, which has been kind of mind blowing, is to learn how um learning how to control the amount of air that leaves your pipes. Your, your your while you're singing actually um, increases the quality of your voice. Oh. Like the way you sound yeah. sounds really, really much more textured and like mm. uh like beautiful yeah. if you 
control, if you can bring good pressure and control the amount of air. So if you sing and you don't control the air, it just comes out kind of like wheezy. Like you don't have a lot of um, like eh, chopensaki. Capoeira que é bom nunca cai. Ou eu posso, I can sustain no. my voice. Capoeira que é bom nunca cai. Oh, cool. I'm oh, controlling cool. nice. how much air that I'm putting into and really, mm -hmm. so really practical way how you can practice this. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to get a cup and you're going to fill that cup about, about this much with water, maybe a little bit more. And you're going to get one of those thick straws from like, you know, Burger King and Starbucks has yeah. these like thicker straws and you're going to put, I don't, this is not a straw, so I'm not going to put it in here. Yeah. You're going to put it in the cup. And you're going to blow into that straw and you're going to create bubbles. Yeah. And what you're going to do is you're just going to sing your song. Ooh. Oh, cool. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. And yeah. you're going to do that just for two minutes. There's there's a couple of things that that helps with. One, it's an incredible vocal warm up. It's actually going to get you to get ready to sing. So after you do that, you can sing. Yeah. And also um, the pressure that you're creating through that straw, it's kind of like the strength conditioning for your for your vocal cords. Huh. So you're huh. actually creating, um, you're learning how to control that tension of air. And when you go to sing, you're going to feel like you're able to bring more support and uh, control into how much air is leaving your lungs whenever you're singing. So, right. so nice. It's one that I need to do more. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> All that's of us. That's pretty cool. And then, uh, uh, is the is the goal to create just like big bubbles or just like just always like just uniform consistent. bubbles? Consistent. You oh, want to be consistent. Okay. You don't want to be forceful, but you, yeah. you have to also try. Like you nice. need to need some sort of okay. tension. Every time you're working with your vocal cords, you want to make sure that you're not creating too much tension. So yeah. if you're like warming up and all of a sudden you're like, dang, my throat hurts. Yeah, you went too far. Like you need yeah. to take a not take it a notch down. And I think vocal warm up is something that like nobody does in capoeira. Like no. <laughs> um <laughs> guys, it's it literally changes the texture of your voice to, to do a vocal warm up. Like yeah. and even when you're done, right, Faisk? When you're done, we, we gotta we gotta do this. The, the other way around, because once you, you're warmed up and your voice is going to be reaching a certain level, if you don't, I don't know how to say this, this warm it up, yeah, warm you're going to be, cool yeah, down. yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're cool down. Exactly. You're going to be singing with that read, like that level of talking, yeah. you yeah. leave the harder and you're going to be talking because your voice is warmed up. Yeah. And you you don't even notice. Yep. Yeah. And that, that that gets really tiring, really, really tiring, you know? Yeah, that's a really great point. I like I like that warm up because that also helps me me personally for for the podcast. Because you know, he's he he he's his voice using and then you just talking and talking, and we talk and talk and talk, and then it's very important for us to you know, in in, in the hot that you just like so important for us to use our voice. So, 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 so important. Another, another tip for, for you or for anybody who wants to sing, right? Before you start a podcast, before you're going to go sing, do the like motor sound, put a timer on your clock for one minute and just go. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Nice. Nice. For one minute. Yeah. And then you can do a glissando. So after you do it with no sound, you can do it with sound. So go. Yeah. This is what I do. With the tongue as well, nice. right, Faisca? Yeah. Brrr, right? Yeah, you can do it with the tongue as well. That's oh, right. Cool. And oh, and cool. I think if you do that, like take three minutes to warm up. Um, you'll like if you have any phlegm that sometimes gets stuck in there, that, that gets in the way of singing. Yes. Um, it'll start to kind of release and go away. So oh. preferably like don't eat cheese or yogurt or milk before you sing, like these things. No, wait, really? Like, Oh, oh yeah, this is in case you like the creamy the in the oil stuff. Yeah, it, it starts to oh. build up phlegm, so you'll. That's why I'm vegan. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's what I see. Good plug. Good plug. Nice. Yeah. Oh, cool. See, I didn't know about the the, the lactose stuff. That that. Yep. That's crazy. I didn't know that. Cool. And then what what about like uh like to create lyrics? So we we went a little bit of of um on on like exercises for the voice and all that but now when it comes for you to to 
create those lyrics. And then uh, I know both of you have created ly lyrics before. And to to exercise or tips for people to even English speakers, because I'm I believe English speakers can also do this. Yeah. What do you guys think? You want to go first, Alba? Well, um, I guess that uh, writing a song is is such a a uh, and, and a beautiful thing. It, it's not it's not only about writing a song for the sake of writing. Like there's yes, there's so many things attached, you know. So I guess that it can start with improvising. So like maybe when you have the paranawe. Paranauê, Paraná. Oi, aqui não sou querido. Lá na minha terra eu sou Paraná. This thing of improvising helps you. Because improvising can also have the, 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 the impact of rhyming and then the, 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 the words that you choose. So Think it's not fast, something like, yeah. Yeah, it's not something very complex. Yeah. So you, you, go, you go like just one verse. So, aqui não sou querido, lá no, lá no Paraná eu sou. Aqui não sou querido, na casa da minha mãe eu sou. You, you play with it, you know? You play with it, it's something straight to the point. Um, I've mentioned this before to you when in our uh, previous podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I think it helps me a lot, it's like I get a word when I'm composing a song. I, I got to have a word that will guide me through my, 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 my song. Nice. So nice. again, going back to uh, Mia Bagage. Mia Bagage was like the word, the key word was Bagage. And then I had the brainstorm. What are the words that are connected to Bagage that will help me convey my idea? So I got a, a notebook and I started writing. Uh, whether I was thinking about rhyming or not, I was writing words. Bagagem, camaradagem, passagem, viagem. Great. Nice. And then, okay, I don't have any other words that rhyme. So I'll, I'll think of other, okay, capoeiragem. Oh, another one. Great. No pressure. Yeah. The more words you have, the better. Okay, this is first step. Okay, I'm done with it. Now I'll start writing isolated, scattered sentences. Okay. Yeah. Capoeiragem me traz bagagem. Hmm, I didn't like this one. Capoeiragem me faz ter mais viagem. Hmm, I don't know. Start playing. Yeah. Write everything. Write oh, everything. Cool. In the following day, you get it again. Third part. Yeah. Then you're going to get the, the, the sentences that were cool for you, that, that they work. And then you start organizing them to be coherent. Yeah, you know, because uh, I I gotta be coherent on what what I'm writing, and then you organize them, and then there are other there are other things that you're gonna work, but mostly okay. I gotta have a keyword. I gotta have a theme to write. I don't write about anything. There there must be a theme. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna be talking about uh, composing. Okay, so uh, when I wrote e valores o cantar. Na roda de capoeira, o berimbau, quando chama na roda, faz o corpo todo arrepiar. I was thinking about the act of singing and what it brings to people. Yeah, singing, nice. what is singing? What is singing? And then when I thought of singing, I said, I got to talk about charanga. I got to talk about culture. I got to talk about history. I got to talk... Boom, things started crossing my mind and I, I, I organized them. So imagine that there's so many things scattered and you're organizing them in order yeah. to compose a song. It's not a one day thing. Yeah. What I can tell people, yeah. and this is one <laughs> of the problems, is that people think that they're going to they're gonna compose a song in one day and in the following day they're going to get famous. Forget about <laughs> yeah. it. Forget about it. The next you're going to write, it must take like, a month, oh, a yeah. month for you to, you know, write the song and then adapt it to your voice and then adapt it to the, the what is the talkie? Okay, is, is it going to be Banguela, something in the regional or Angola? I don't know. I don't know. I have a friend, uh, Formado Saverio, he composed a song for, for Sambento Grande Regional 
And when we were about to record the album, we changed it for Samba de Roda. Can you believe it? <laughs> a song that it was supposed to be, São Bento Grande, ended up being Samba de Roda. Ah, that's and right. that's perfect. That's yeah. perfect. But we needed to, you know, try and think about it and play as many times as we could. And uh, there will be songs that you're going to compose and you're not going to sing. Yeah. And that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. I have songs that I have written that I have not exposed myself to anybody. I, I have not, you know, some people don't know. I have a song. It's written. It's here. Yeah. There's, there's a rhythm. There's a melody. But I don't sing it. It was an exercise for me. Nice. And there are songs, man, that I, boom, I wrote and they were ready. And then I played, my master loved it, my student loved it. And I started singing like as nice. if it were, you know. So um, it is a, a journey. Composing songs is a journey to everybody, to everybody. Again, yeah. the, the same thing that I said about singing, I say about composing. Okay, I'm going to compose a song. There's four verses. Amazing, beautiful. Nice. Sing it. Sing yeah. it, sing it. Oh, but there's no rhyme. Amazing, sing <laughs> it. Are you happy with it? Oh, yeah. I, I am. Perfect. You wrote a song. Yeah. And that's it. it it's a series of exercises that you're going to be doing. And one day, eventually, there will be a song of yours that people will, are going to be singing or not. We don't write songs for that. I don't write songs for that. I write songs... Because I'm a teacher, I like writing. I've always enjoyed writing. And I, you know, I want to share my ideas with people. And that's it. Period. So play with it. Have fun with it. Um, evolve, you know? I guess the capoeiristas must write songs in order to evolve. Because they will be researching about the culture. They will nice, be nice. researching like about that. the language. They're going to be uh, getting to know themselves better. You know, when yeah. you write a song, you get to know yourself better. So it's it's an exercise for yourself. Nice. So that's I like it. That. I like that. I, I love that you finished on that point because um, when I composed a song for Capoeira, I, I composed it for myself because I was personally going through a very difficult time. Um, this was along with my hip surgery and I had just moved from Rio to Miami, a lot of cultural adaptations. It was very uh, yeah. difficult for me. And, um, you know, I think there's a lot of elements of what you say, what you're saying that, that resonates with me. So, um, I had told my husband, I want to write a song. He's very like into music too. He sings. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. He's, he, he was a musician before I was. <laughs> oh, that, that's why you were shy to sing in front of him. Yes. You, yes. You, exactly. You, exactly. You thought he was <laughs> good. Yeah. That's, that's cool. Though. And, um, and we were playing, we, you know, we listened to a lot of Brazilian music, um, nice. Bossa Nova, Samba. Um, I just think exposing yourself to a lot of different varieties, you can make references to Amazing. tap of the hat, tip of the hat to certain um, cultural references, which I think, which is what I did. So uh, the song that I wrote goes, Capoeira que é bom nunca cai, se um dia ele cai, cai bem, na roda de capoeira e na vida também. So nice. there's a song nice. from, I think it's Vinicius de Moraes, né? Capoeira que é bom, não cai, se um dia ele cai, cai bem, da 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 Yeah, And And that, that um, so the melody, it took me quite some time to figure out the structure of the melody. But when I sat, and I, and I, it probably took me like three months, I don't know, it took me a long time. And then once I got down the melody, I, I literally sat down to write the rest of the song and the whole thing came out like the whole thing That's like cool. i inspiration always finds you uh inspiration always finds you working yeah yeah, yeah. so inspiration is not gonna come when you're like oh, i'm gonna walk i mean it could but <laughs> i have yeah. found that for creatives a lot of times creatives we want to just be walking down the park and the whole song comes yeah. to <laughs> no usually it comes in the shower <laughs> but i'm feeling it i'm feeling it it's like no you need to yeah. you need to stop you need to put in the work yeah, yeah and um one thing for me that was really i like to lean into um things that interest me right and i'm a person who i desire to grow in wisdom for like sure. I don't want to make the mistakes of uh, of other 30 year 30 35 year olds are making. Like 
I want to be wiser beyond my years. I want to yeah. grow faster in capoeira. I want to be able to really extract all of the knowledge that exists. So I like to sit at the feet of people who know more than me. And I like yes. to ask questions. Yeah. And when you decide that you're going to write a song, at least this is how it was for me, everything becomes lyrics. Like <laughs> I'll be talking to somebody and they're talking about true story. They're talking about the Arami of the Birimbao and how when it gets too hot, it, it rips. It, 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 yeah. And so I had been training capoeira. Eu tava cabeça muito quente. Like I couldn't chill out in my game. I was too <laughs> So I wrote part of the verse. I wrote, uh, cabeça fria e clareza, malandragem e destreza, arame que esquenta não aguenta, distempere e arrebenta, faz o Birimbao para. Oh, so, nice. And that I I literally had just gotten off the phone with um my friend from Rio contra Mestarobia, and he um I was like eu, eu trouxe um, I brought a bunch of beating balls from Brazil and um I I snapped one of them like the that army like completely snapped and I was talking to him and I was like bro like I don't know like maybe I did something wrong like, no 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 faz que tipo arame que esquenta não aguenta ele yeah. ele tempera ele arrebenta and I was like caraca that's a song there right there <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, I gotta go, I gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Talk to you later. Yeah. yeah. He's like, I gotta He's go. Like, and, and, you know, and, and even like um I I train under Contra Mes Cavallo, and in one class, he was like giving us instructions after class and saying, like, you guys need to be more patient. Like the the game, it needs to it, it's é como um bom prato caseiro. Ele toma tempo para pegar o tempero. E eu, caraca, como um bom para nice. Só com o tempo da tempero, faz o coco vadia. Nice. Então, assim, é... and it's, to me, it's so special to be able to grab so things cool. that I'm experiencing and learning and create like an awesome rhyme out of it, yeah. you know? And I, I think it is super hard. I'm still in the process of writing more songs. I haven't been able to write anything that I feel like super excited and proud to like put out there yeah but part of the process is yeah of course playing around and um sharing with people you don't yeah. have to write by yourself yeah you exactly know? So, exactly i one day i went to to a capoeira a workshop where they put i think four or five people and then each of them like came with with, with like verses and lines and then they put all the verses together to create one single song And I, I did that, this in Argentina. Really cool. It was really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. I, I, I had groups, you know, like four or five people. Yeah. And for each group, they would come up with a theme and write a song. Nice. And it's amazing because like, uh, like people start, you know, adding and adding. I have this thing with my friend from Ad Salvador. I send him things and he sends me back and like, you know, so we cool, exchange man. ideas. So sometimes it's like my mastery, I compose something. It's like, uh, like 10 verses. And he does the other two that I was not able to, to yeah. you know, to conclude. And then he gives me more two, like, oh, thank you, man. Yeah. So, yeah, nice. So it's sharing, sharing, yeah, sure. exchanging. And uh, man, we, it's, uh, it's beautiful. When it's, uh, I, I love what Faisca said about the thing about wisdom. Yeah. Uh, and uh, um, I, I, it takes time. It takes like uh, um, exchanging and having people who are like surrounding, surrounded by like, Okay, I'm I'm here for you. You know, like uh, I'm not judging. I'm not judging. Let me yeah. let me help you. Okay, yeah. again, as I told you, like we're not gonna get famous because maybe we we will. Maybe we will, but yeah. that's not the main goal. The main goal is like uh, what Faisca said. I was talking on the phone. I got something. Bingo! Boom. I got yeah. a song. You know, and 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 maybe she'll be singing this for people in Miami, and people will love. And then one day she comes to São Paulo. And people will not love, and that's okay. That's yeah. totally okay. But she loved it. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. That's it. You know. Yeah. I nice. Think the, the the thing you said about rhyming too, I think, is super super cool and a great like easy way to start. And not only that, but it it prepares you to freestyle. I mean, I think the like oh, the yes. ultimate level, the ultimate level of music in capoeira is if you can freestyle. <laughs> Oh, that, sure. that's like so if you cool. can freestyle and like you know put out some jabs you know yeah, right yeah. here on the spot and 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 that requires having a lot of like vocabulary and and like the cadence of the song down yeah. if you mess up like you're out so 
Because <laughs> I've been, I've been also in hadas where like two masters they're on the beating balls and they just having a conversation back and forth with the with the music. And it comes to what Faisca just said, like that skill of like coming up with something, something there, and then you just go together with all that. It's just so, so cool. I, want, I wanted to share something that another thing that really helped me. Um, inspire me for composing. I joined a samba school called Casa de Tapera. Oh, cool. uh, você deve conhecer, né? I know, and, I know. Uh -huh. And I did their online course for a year. I'm actually repeating it because I loved it so nice. much. And it, it like, basically they study samba, uh, samba de roda, and just explain all the origins of samba baiano, do recôncavo, mm -hmm. and just kind of how it spread out, how you know, Samba Jinhedo came to be, how, where did Pagodji come from? And yeah. like all of the roots of Samba. And also you learn like a ton of different cojidos. And you actually come to learn that most of our cojidos in, in Capoeira come from Samba. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Um, I think that you study like a ton of different like albums and different genres of music. You don't just study Samba, you study like a lot of Brazilian music. And it um, stimulated just a lot of my creativity. Like nice. on the spot one day, we were we would like challenge each other with samba songs, and I made one up like on the oh, spot. Cool. And just it just like that was the energy that was flowing, and like it was just so much incredible creativity. So lean into knowledge, like you guys. There's there's information out there. Casa de Tapera is one of them. It's fully in Portuguese, so that is kind of a prerequisite is that you're ready to like speak in Portuguese and sing in Portuguese a lot. Um, but I found it to be so helpful to understand the history of Brazilian music and also have like this repertoire of, of samba. Now, like when you come a rodinha de samba, for mais que não é samba de roda at the end of, of a capoeira event, like I'm already there, like <laughs> sambas and I'm trying to get people to like come along too, you yeah. know, so it's cool. Nice, nice. And samba is so such a like 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 a party music, you know. Just like it makes you jump, and then everybody's just like happy, and you know, it's just like samba. Oh, it's so cool, man. Yeah, and then uh to to close it up, uh, each of you single advice for for music to develop the music and to like come up with with the practice and get a motivation for for music. I'll share the advice that I'm giving myself right now. Yes. Be consistent. You're not going to get good if you're not consistent. This is what I tell myself all the time. I train, I, I do like the physical training a ton. I had to like tell myself, Julia, you need to train less capoeira. Tipo, I was training five times a week. Maybe I can train three times a week and actually dedicate some sincere time to studying and playing because you have to play to get nice. good. Nice. Beautiful. Like that. Uh, along with that, don't underestimate yourself. I guess that uh, the thing of uh, our judgment nowadays, because we were so exposed on social network and uh, there's so many good people. And uh, the thing about the, the courts, again, as I said, we, we, got, we got labeled. You know, yeah. there, there's, there's labels all the time. And okay. Uh, only professors can do that. No, forget about the label. Forget about the label. Uh, it doesn't matter if you started training capoeira like 27 years ago, as I did, or if you like started last week. If yeah. you're consistent, as Faisca said, if you're like uh, really dedicating some time for that, and uh, if you uh, don't underestimate yourself, like talk to people, learn, put into practice, and put love, you know? On, on, on your sleeves like I, I i i love i love this thing of okay it's it's what is the goal of doing this it's love yeah beautiful okay so you're, you're gonna get there you're gonna get there it doesn't matter don't don't worry about like uh, how long will it take for me to be seeing if you think about this like uh, as the priority like it's it's not gonna help yeah. think about how how much fun you're gonna have think about think about how much you're gonna evolve as a human being after that yeah so yeah. If, if this helps you if this makes you happy if this makes you like part of a community amazing amazing don't think about like okay when will i be able to sing this on a charanga with mestre pauline no yeah. don't think about this now yeah start putting some hard work 
love yourself, love what you do, and then things are gonna help. Like uh, I, I when the first time that I wrote my song, I was not thinking about okay, I'll be taking part in an album, I'll be recording an album with my friends. I, I really, for real, I didn't think about it. Or doing when a podcast song, about music. <laughs> no way, yeah. it's no way, no way. With a guy from Indianapolis with a girl from Miami, I have yeah. not considered this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> so things things will happen uh, and in a, in a very organic way. Uh, it, you just got to put love, you know? Yeah, That's it. I like that. I like that. And and you come out, you know, just more like confident and then you come out happy because you did something and then it's just, it's, it's just another accomplishment that you, that's going to make you happy too. Sure. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much guys for, for sharing that knowledge. I wish we can speak for another two hours and I'm pretty sure we can. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I bet it's, it's so, it's so fun to, to, you know, to talk to you guys and, and learning from you guys and just like, sharing capoeira i really really hope to see you guys in person one day no super nice thank you so much learned so much with you both today thank you I appreciate thank it. you guys thank you so much thank oh, you then... guys it was like an amazing time uh i wish we could be talking this like in person and then oh, like yes. i would i would get a bidding bow and <laughs> yeah oh you know, yeah it's, I'm, I'm here like oh my god i want to play video i want to <laughs> see these guys oh. <laughs> that would be so fun man yeah 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 for sure totally. well, I, i was actually talking to to cave sound to i want to go to to miami soon nice nice come visit yeah. us yes oh thank you so much guys and uh for sure i'll talk to you guys later sounds good amazing bye guys thank you hey Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for being part of this episode one more time. And thank you so much for being part of the Capoeira community. I'm very happy you made it all the way to the end. Now, make sure you listen to the next episode next week or the following week or the previous episodes. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram. And don't forget to reach out so we can have you on the podcast. Okay. Thank you so much for being part of this amazing journey in the Capoeira community. And I really, really hope to see you one time here in Indianapolis or I'll see you in the hot next time. Okay. Keep training, keep your Capoeira school, keep supporting your Capoeira school and keep training, keep loving Capoeira, keep training, keep training, and keep playing the hot. I'll see you in the hot next time. Peace.